Welcome back to Mac Music Review. I am your host, Mac. Today we're looking at an album for a dude. Just want to say there's going to be some stuff down in the description. If you want to know the channel works, all that good stuff will be down in the description for this video. Today we are looking at the album Beyond Control by King's Kaleidoscope, and this is the really great album cover. Beyond Control technically is like the second full-length King's Kaleidoscope album released after, it was the next album they did after uh, Becoming Who We Are, which was their huge, you know, major label. Even though it wasn't on a major label, so I say that, but like, it, it's just kind of their real album because they, you know, they've grouped their real debut album, Sin, with the, the Under the Kings, H-M-M-H, M-H-M, Kings in the parentheses, M-H-M, which I don't even know why they did that, but that's like their separate type of thing, they grouped their, their, their main music, this is their second official full-length album under the King's Kaleidoscope name, and it was not received as positively as the first, namely because they used the F word in the song A Prayer, it was explicit, and you know, there's two versions of the album, one of them is explicit, one of them is clean, and it, it, the Christian world just kind of went, you know, all the people who were talking about King's Kaleidoscope who loved becoming who we are, were like, oh, you can't say that. That's bad. That's a bad word. This is, this is, what is this, Christian music? You can't say the F word in Christian music. And it made them really controversial. And it's actually kind of a joke. I went to their concert and the opening act was, jo was joking about them saying the word. And it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a meme, and it's one of the things that really King's Kaleidoscope are known for is being the Christian band that said the F words. So this album, it's, it's to date, it's like their most popular song is um, A Prayer, their most legendary, notorious, infamous song. But um, is this album kind of, kind of defined them in a way, the song specifically. Anyway, this album has 13 tracks on it, only nine full-length songs, because there are four interludes on this thing, which is crazy. The first song is an interlude, uh, Ride On Reprise, which I don't know what that's referencing. They don't have another song called Ride On, so I don't know why they have Ride On Reprise. That's weird. And then, um, In This Ocean Part 2 is also like an interlude, and then Friendship, which is almost three minutes long. It's such a long interlude, and that, that's another interlude on this thing. Um, as far as the tracks go... Uh, you have one really long song, which is Trackless Sea, the closing song on this thing. It's like six minutes long. It has like a hidden track built into it. So if you're listening to this on CD, or, you know, if you're listening to it on CD, you know, the song ends, the song ends, and you turn it off. But if you just keep listening, there's like a lot of seconds of silence, and then it comes back, and it's different. So it's basically got a hidden track, which works more effectively on CD than on a, um, digitally because you know how much longer the song has so it's not super well hidden anyway the best word to describe beyond control is messy and that really is part of the lyrical theme of the album as well it's called be it the name of the album is beyond control but when i say messy i don't just mean him talking about how his life is messy how he has anxiety how the guy is talking about I think his name is Zach Gardner. I think that's the name of the lead singer for the band. But how he's not just talking about how his like spiritually messy, like all this mentally messy, all that kind of stuff. He's also, the music is all over the place on this thing. I mean, like, a lot of the songs are really loud and noisy, and they have, like, background vocals, and this, and this. You know, it's like a ten-piece band. But while Becoming Who We Are sounded very, very fine-crafted, very fine-tuned and meticulous... This is more like Sin, their real debut album that is no longer under the name King's Kaleidoscope for some reason. Because this is really messy and all over the place. I mean, even more messy than Sin, because Sin, that was just kind of like on purpose. On this album, it doesn't always feel on purpose. It's just kind of noisy and just all over the place. To review this album, I kind of just want to go over the track list, tell you what I think about the songs, because some of this stuff, this album is really a mixed bag. Some of the stuff is really great, and some of the stuff is, like, okay. The intro to this thing is pretty good. It's, you know, a good way to kick off the album. Enchanted is, you know, 
it's kind of explosive. It's the percussion on that is very explosive. It's got like these random background vocals will just spring into the song and then this will start happening and this will start happening. So it's really messy, but it's kind of magical. It feels, it's really original. It's kind of a special sounding song. It's something that says, hey, this is like no other band makes music that sounds just like this. This is very King's Kaleidoscope. Then the next song, most of it is literally like the worst song they've ever made. It's this hyper happy upbeat song with this extremely cheesy background vocals, like feminine or childish background vocals. I really try to avoid the song altogether because it's awful. It sounds terrible. It's a easily like the worst song they've ever made. The next song, Dust, is really, really good, but also the music is kind of messy, which isn't really a bad thing, but I feel like I should say that. It, it is a good sounding song. It really does sound really, really good. Just a little bit not focused. And then you have the Ride on Reprise, which is a really good interlude. The King's Kaleidoscope, just really, really great interludes, especially on Becoming Who We Are. They're really fantastic interludes and the beauty between these guys just nail interludes and intros and stuff like that and then in this ocean part one just fantastic chorus this is a song that is truly uplifting the music just makes your heart soar it just feels magical easily one of the best moments on this album really really great and then you have friendship which you know is an interlude and i have to talk about it because it's so bad it's like almost three minutes long and it's totally pointless and there's no reason to ever listen to it and it's nothing it's like almost it's like random drumming that just doesn't sound good at all and like random laughing for no reason and it's like it's about friendship i guess there's no like real talking it's just laughing and bad drumming it's a terrible song it's a terrible interlude and it's too long Lost is a stripped back, heartfelt song that kind of borders on boring, but the music, it, it really isn't boring. It, re it really, it's definitely not a bad slow song. It just kind of almost borders on boring, I, I would say. Sabotage slash Home is good. It's too long. It's like almost five minutes and it doesn't, it just kind of drags. It's, you know, it's not terrible. And then Gone is not bad forgettable okay it, it doesn't sound bad the lyrics aren't bad the music isn't bad it's just nothing nothing to sneeze at and then you have a prayer which is you know the really big controversial song that uses the f word easily like top three best king's kaleidoscope songs of all time it's absolutely incredible this song is the most desperate song they've ever made their most raw and it's it's kind of hard to describe with words, but other than saying it's truly amazing and it's something you absolutely have to hear because it's amazing. Listen to it right now, A Prayer by King's Kaleidoscope. Seriously amazing song. Trackless Sea is the last song on this album. It's over six minutes long, longest song on this album by a long shot. It's very huge sounding. It's very epic and like, as the band is known for, is being really big and epic, and a prayer is insanely huge and epic, but this as well. And it's really, really great music, uh, vocals, lyrics, everything about this. The, I have to say, um, the hidden track part of this song, after like 30 or 40 seconds of silence, when, they, when this song comes back, it's really, really loud and crazy. The music is like really electronic and just everywhere and really, it's one of the most chaotic moments on the album, but also one of the best. Definitely check out this song. It's really, really good. All in all, I this is King's Kaleidoscope is literally one of the most consistent bands I've ever listened to. Like in terms of their actual albums and EPs, they're so insanely consistent. Their stuff is so consistently great. In fact, every review I've done three King's Kaleidoscope reviews, we reviewed Sin, Beauty Between, and uh, Becoming Who We Are on my channel, and gave them all very positive reviews. This is the only one I don't love by King's Kaleidoscope. The only one I don't think is really great. I'm going to give it 3.5 out of 5. Just a messy, inconsistent album with some truly amazing moments. Thank you for watching the video. Have a great rest of your day. Also check out Taboo by Denzel Curry. Really great album!
Thank you for watching the video.